All right, everybody, good evening. Welcome to the lecture hall. Professor Bobo here, bringing you a little Division C East action here in the very last week of NGS season number five. We are deep into round four, and tonight we have the Minion Miners going up against the House of Shez. Tonight our map bands will be Dragonshire and Brax's Holdout. And we will be headed to Tomb of the Spider Queen as well as Volskaya Foundry. Volskaya will be up first. Minion Miners won the coin toss. They selected first pick. They chose two of the Spider Queen. This is kind of neat. Good mix of battlegrounds tonight. Not heading to the usual places. Although Volskaya is quite the popular map here in season. Numero 5. Oh, we didn't change this. Rip. All right. Like I said, we have two uh, mid-table teams. Uh, so right now, right in the middle of the playoff positions, like fourth and fifth, uh, House of Shez has uh, been around. I did cast some games of theirs last season. Real solid team. Mini Miners, I am new to. Uh, but both teams have this, just about the same record. About the same number of points. It's pretty cool here, man. This could actually wind up being a first round rematch. Uh, or these teams could be somewhere in uh, anywhere, really, from, I guess you would say, possibly even second mathematically. Although, give me the D-Shield, a really good team. So, anywhere from probably three to maybe six, seven-ish for this group. That'd be kind of cool, man. Uh, FYI, Brightwing and Kerrigan reworks are live. You may play those heroes with Reckless Abandon, and we hope to see really cool things come out uh, for both of them. I have no idea what to expect. Are they good? Probably. Are they OP? Most likely. Will we find out? Who knows? Well, we're headed to Volskaya Foundry for game number one. Shout out to NMVP in chat. Awfully for the best storm div team ever. Wink, wink. So... With Brightwing and Kerrigan being uh, very powerful heroes, and with Brightwing being an especially popular one, that we expect to see a good change around the way that uh, things unfold here in the primary band phase. There are a lot of heroes that we could see uh, banned here, and it's wild in that probably the most powerful class could uh, could be argued as supports, and we do see Decker Kane as the first band. This being Volskaya, Alex Strauss moves up in priority as well. But White Main, Taronda still lurking. New Brightwing as well. Diablo Ban. I now consider to be the strongest tank in the meta. We'll have neither Diablo nor his. Ancient interloper Deckard Cain involved here in Volskaya. Don't know where to go. It, it seems like ranged heroes do get like no priority in the band department. Jaina, which is just a good, nice, solid. You can't argue with the Jaina band. She's a good hero. Like Phoenix is banned out as well. Phoenix took a big hit in that Purification Salvo was up from 75 seconds to 90 seconds. And now when you have to late until well late in the game for level 16 when you actually do get the old school battle momentum for Phoenix, which reduces all of your cooldowns, it still feels bad, man. For the horde. First pick, Johanna. May have something to say about this. Good skin. And Mini Miners are on the board with their tank selection up first. Now we're at House of Shadows. Man, I guess it's some games last season with these guys. I wonder if they were the guys that broke the Zebo out. Malfurion and Blaze. Interesting in that all of these supports available and Malfurion is the choice. What does this mean? For House of Shez. They also pick up the Blaze. Blizzard trying to move Blaze into a main tank role. It's not going to show for a little while. Probably needs a couple of tweaks. Anytime you're ready. And Jimmy and Kael'thas are picked up by Minion Miners. Teams making wildly different priorities here. 
in the start of this draft. Uh, let's see what this Melf is. Well, House of Shiz run a double support. Maybe you pick up a Hypercarry? Very advanced. All of this obviously suggesting the Malfurion Tracer pairing. Feels like a bit of a feint. Let's see if it earns a free ban or if House of Fiesta has the Pocket Tracer tonight. It's a Gul'dan, maybe smelling. Again, is this a double support? Hyper carry? Oh, the yep, there's a Cassia. Bring the mega Do you see it now? The rest of the draft is wide open. Options abound here for House of Shadows, and they've worked their draft very well. And they know exactly what their opponent's uh, damage uh, is going to be. Now they can to ascertain whether or not they want to go double support to counter Kael'thas Rainer or whether they want to bring uh, another backline hero. Oh, How neat! Lucio and Arthas! What a cool pairing. And a hard counter to Cassia. What a very neat pickup by Minion Miners. I'm not sure, but again, not sure where House of Shez is going to go. Make way for the bad guy! They go with a Zul'jan! What a neat little draft we have here, folks. We got a Zul'jan, we have an Arthas, we got an old school Lucio. Malfurion went off the board first. Who needs a Taronda, a Brightwing, a White Mane? Or an Alexstrasza. What a neat little draft. I like it. early game both of these teams struggle to get kills just because it takes them a while to apply all of their damage but they do have some very obvious and strong cc combos mouthy cc is old school lucio can create combos but it is objectively not that easy with johanna kalthos it does mean sometimes you're going to have to burn the trait on Gravity Laps just to try to rip, uh, just to try to rip the triple stun. Interesting. All right, we'll see how it goes. Let's head on over to the game screen. Over on the side of Minion Miners. A Mac of Cheese is going to be playing the Kael'thas. Cawthon on the Johanna. Whisker on the Lucio. Gobo will be playing the others. And the Himibo on the Rainer. Why not? Gotta do it once. For a House of Sheds! Meritor's gonna be playing that Blaze. Flash hiding in there on that Zul'jan. Looks like Peach is gonna be on the Cassia. I see Garibu on a Zul'jan. Oh, and I gotta get this one right. Death Arcarius is gonna be playing the ETC. Somebody tell me if I did that one anywhere near right. Would be much appreciated. Fun times, we got a Zul'jan, folks. It's Headhunter. That's a massive power spike. That's a massive amount of sprays being thrown out there. Everybody having a good time. Just getting introduced to one another. And ETC starts with the slide and they condemn to be pulling that bad boy out. A whole lot of CC goes out. Not too much going on. So with Headhunter, Zul'jin has to be present for a kill on everybody. And then that's a 1.1 bonus attack range. It's huge. Good root there by Caribou. Playing a sweet bit of CC right there. Chat, what's going on tonight? I'll try to interact with you fine, fine people. I'll try to figure out what's going on with this Zul'jin. Oh, we got the Lucio by Whisker. How neat. Minion Miner's doing a good job of spreading out here against the ETC. You can see them play uh, with different members in the north and south parts of the lane. Just to try to avoid that devastating combo, because I do think Power Slide Root will probably be, probably be enough. I assume Peach will sell out on the Cassia. 
for the combined damage between Cassia and Zuzu. That should be enough. Down to the bot lane, Kobo being pushed back by Blaze. As Himmy and Wesker work on the game's first mercenary camp. With Kael'thas and Johanna, it's easy to make uh, a safe yet gimped. You know, quasi four-man rotation with just Johanna and KT here. When you see the fortification turret picked up, the first item is on the board. Taking a look. New habits is getting stacked pretty quickly. Seven globes there. Five on Mana Addict. Four Kael'thas. Fortification Flash will go ahead and pick up the fortification turret on the side of House of Shez. Mana Addict will be very important here. I could see this very well being a, uh, a Valkyrie game. And I can see Kael'thas certainly being the target. And if that is the case, you want any chance to get it out there, you're going to have to stagger shields with... Uh, with Lucio as well as Mana Addict once completed. A quarter level lead. Looks like Minion Miners just missed some minions. And also they do have the disadvantage here in the bottom lane as Blaze is currently bodying up on Arthas. However, Arthas into the team fight here. Will do very well if he can avoid uh, the initial Kill attempt and get on to Cassia. See how it goes? Okay. Mariners is on the back line. Hits a two man stun. The members of House of Shiz trying to slide up, but Blaze is too far forward. Calton trying to get on out of there. Blaze is going down. An ambitious flank. He had a great jet propulsion. And it's going to cost not only Blaze, probably ETC. We see Bresker on there. Lucy looking to disengage, but now has to step forward, looking out. It's Flash is looking to start getting that Headhunter stack. Members of Minion Miners are low. But with a Lucio and with a Johanna on the front. Should do pretty well. Coffin. Spoke too soon. One kill for Zul'jan. Top lane a little bit of AFK push. My House of Shez was just on this from start to finish. They take two kills to one. Catch up in XP. However, what was an ambitious flank did not work out. Kobo is in big trouble here. Just a three-man jet propulsion, but Arthas is zoning up very well. The root comes through, but only hits him. Well. Rainer will wind up being okay. Long way for Arthas to go out. There's another power slide in the baseball combo. He can very well keep them alive. Wesker is low. Needs to watch out for the auto attacks. There's another jet propulsion from Mariner. Just hit the big ones, baby. Coffin goes in, Iron Skin has been used. Condemn if there isn't a kill. Here on the side of Minion Miners, they could be in big trouble. There goes Johanna for one. Let me see if we've got any follow-up CC. There's a Jet Propulsion, but Mariners goes down to auto attacks. Zimbibo gets a counter kill. Flash gets another one. That's two stacks on Headhunter, I do believe. And the Treglov Protector. So a little bit of Kamikaze on the Blaze, but... The fact that these are two and three men jet propulsions are doing the trick. It's enough of lockdown for a number of auto attacks by Zul'jin and for the damage from Cassia to start to stack up. They need that longer period of CC because they are running uh, two heroes that have... You don't want to call it, It's not really burst damage. It's high sustain. It does a lot over a small amount of time. Iron Skin has to be brought. Kobo's on the backside here. Has a long way to go. Need to watch out because this Mad Lad hits like a ton of bricks. Arthas goes down. Trick Law Protector finds himself a kill. With Arthas going down, I think if Zul'jin gets involved there, that's three. Now Death Eye Karras sliding his teammates up. Very close to level 10. House of Shez picks up not just a wall, not just a kill, but also the all-important top well. Also picked up mid wall. That's about as good as a first rotation can be with the objective. And considering at one point, that's what just was down two kills. 
two kills to one. They're now up a level and a quarter. They can go ahead and bully around the map a little bit. They'll start with the fortification turret on their enemy side. Bottom lane. Coffin in the jungle here has iron skin. We'll keep an eye on whether or not that cooldown has to be used. Flash is all right. There's iron skin. I'm trying to get out. This is guillotine. Bunker, ball lightning, tranquility, and stage dive. Hmm. All right. Stage dive. Stage dive guillotine? Make me a believer. I want to see it. Also, Shez picks up a biotic emitter. The best named items in all the game. And a very quick response and a good rotation here from Minion Miners. Before they have level 10, they step up in the bottom lane. Let's we'll watch out for Death on Karis. Fairness is too low to contest. They pick up a fortification turret on their enemy side. Sound Barrier, Blessed Shield, Phoenix, Raynor's Raider, and the Army of the Dead. There's a power slide. Kobo's on the wrong side of things here. There's enough CC that he's going to be in big trouble with a great sound barrier. Let's go with a fantastic heroic and a great play by Lucio. Saves Arthas. Well, I was in the middle of calling D.E.D. -E dead. Power slide, root, jet propulsion. Mariners has been on point with a follow-up CC. The sound barrier cooldown is used. Let's with a fantastic Lucio play. An MVP was talking about Lucio boosting into, uh, boosting Arthas into the enemy. Well, that time needed to get it the heck out of dodge. And with Sound VR being allowed about 40 seconds away, 20 on the cooldown. Okay. Mini Miners are in the exact same position they were. With the first objective, they'll probably have to seed the early control. And a posture over this, but without Sound Barrier, that's going to be difficult. ETC is in the bottom lane, but remember, stage dive will probably be content to sit there until 13. The members of House of Shed move to pick up another wave in mid. DC still bottom. All heroics will be up and available. Thirteen is minions away. Johanna actually uses a fortification turret in top, so they got about 48%. They have no way to get 13. They're going to have to win and they have to win a fight down a talent here. There's Kobo at the front. There's the stage dive. The target is at the back with Lucio. Power slide comes through. Lucio has to immediately sound barrier on just himself. Army that is not going to keep Arthur's alive. The first member gone. The Lich King. There's a safety bunker. Iron skin has to be used to get Johanna out of there. House of Shez looks like they will begin to start uh, towards the second objector. Yet another tree love protector. Okay, uh, Lucio's on the point. Arthas steps forward. Stage dive onto the backside. And the power slide connecting on Lucio was the crippling blow in that team. But there's a jet propulsion that doesn't miss. We have the old uh, fuel leak. Yes, fuel leak. Jet Propulsion leaves a trail of oil behind. New Habit's also done for Blaze, so extra security there for Mariners. Uh, but anyway, uh, just getting back to what happened in that team fight. The Power Slide connecting on Lucio splits him. Only two members involved in that sound barrier. There's a soft cleanse that is used to get Zul'jin out of the route. Here's a counter engage with the Victorious up front. Malfurion, though, is the target. He's in the middle of a Phoenix. Kobo is low. Remember, does not have Army of the Dead. He died trying to use it. The first team fight has no way out. Arthas goes down, but at the cost, there's two kills. Zul'jin goes down. Blaze could be next. ETC has already gone down. Coffin pressuring at the front. Johanna up there. Doesn't have any more lockdown. Cassie gets blinded out. And Minion Miners step forward and in a desperate fight, get two kills, pick up a trigger up protector, and start to turn this game around. Slapping the Nintendo Power Glove on the first of top walls towers uh woo. value from the lich king who just refused to go down a 
Level 13 for both sides. Stacking talents have taken a while to get going. Jolchen still has three stacks on Headhunter. I thought he actually might have got it done pending a really good team fight in there. There's Kobo. Who goes down but makes not just space, but he really set up those two kills. The frozen tempest on the off this doing quite a good bit of work. And now Minion Miners setting themselves up for later in the game. They take down bottom. Plus RNG, likely to be bot lane for next objective. Here's a big jet propulsion. Zulchin goes down. That's one bad robot. Blaze goes down as well. I apologize, I was about to turn my head and sneeze. And Gazundide Minion Miners. They pick up kills on Zuljin and Blaze. Their second set of doubles. I was about to comment on how they're still about a half level down. Let's pick that guy up. Now they are just making moves. Mid under pressure from minion. The miners head on up top to pick up a, another biotic emitter. This will take them into level 16. Wesker will pick it up. She just got heals on heals. One more wave will push it. Both teams hit 16. Late game, you were hoping to get Zul'jin and Cassie to be well stacked, but they're still working on their level 1. And really, that's not a, a skill uh, issue. That's the way that these control point fights have gone down, they've been very quick. And there has really only been one, maybe two engagements. And this being the way that Volskaya is played, the the laning phase is very tentative and safe. Not too much going on. No aggressive gank attempts. All 13 of these kills have just come over robots. All right. Point Clown Fiesta will be up next. It is set up for minion miners. They have erased forts in mid and bot. Both teams on the same talent tier. Neither team really shows that they want to fight. Call them will step up here in top lane using Condemn to begin the clear on the mercenary camp. And Death of Akira's posturing a little aggressively on that ETC. He really just wants to move minion miners out of this lane as soon as possible so that he can get value out of stage dive. There's another great nature's cure. Sound barrier comes through, and again, it doesn't connect on either Arthas or Johanna. We've got Phoenix, we've got Tranquility, we've got Circles of Death all over the place. Malfurion goes down first, Kobo hunts down Zul'jin, a huge guillotine. It is not enough, so Mac of Cheese gets out with about 100 HP. Himibu trying to get out there, there's a shotgun blast, and Rinder says, no sir, not on this day. Three more kills for Minion Miners. They have to use a turret, but hey, for three kills, they're all right with that haul. And they will set their sights on the third objective here in the bot lane. Hmm. Kobo is just running it down on that Arthas. And it is doing work. He has created kills. Force teams to run away. And that was the kind of fight that House of Shez did not want. They have a, a stage dive ETC. They looked tentative, couldn't figure out how to get the cow into the fight. They do pick up a fortification turret though on their way. So they have one turret. Minion Miners have a turret. As well as a biotic emitter. Cawthon is up front with a friendly conveyor belt there. Has to use iron skin. Jet Propulsion connects on two, Rainer and Arthas. There's an immediate sound barrier, and Mariners is the target. Actually gets rooted by the Arthas. There's a chase down. Wesker forces the bunker. Can they get the kill on Blaze? There's Kobo eating everything. Trying to use Frozen Tempest to get the kill on Blaze. He actually avoids the power slide. There's a guillotine on the back. It doesn't connect. And now at the front, it's called an Death Icarius. And a war of attrition ends with minion miners picking up yet another Triglov protector. 
control of a protector. No one goes down. But the miners are on their way up. Don't. This is not a game ending trig love at 17 minutes. This is an easy wall, likely a keep. Well, the Rainer is inside. The Nintendo Power Glove applied to the bot lane keep. Disabling it for a hot minute. There's the Phoenix to try to back it up. Boy, Minion Miners, they really want this. They're the guillotine. That's trouble. Jet Propulsion connects with the trigger love protector. Remember, he is unstoppable. He does not care much for that, sir. And there's the disengage. Minion and Miners make it out with a one-level lead. They'll begin to march to 20. Pop it off a little bit on the big guy. They had a mercenary camp pushing against them, but it did not cost them any structural value there in the top lane. Uh, these gentlemen need to be careful. Mariners goes in, but cannot connect on the jet propulsion fuel lead combo. They'll have to just settle for a nice juicy mid fort. Three quarter of a level lead. And before 20, House of Chez will step up, make a snap rotation to the support camp to pick up a biotic emitter of their own. For minion miners, they're going to have to work very quickly to figure out where the 20 fight is. With House of Shez picking up the top camp, minion miners can bully over one or the other, and they're going to choose the fortification turret in the bottom lane. They don't have 20, and they don't have anybody passive soaking. This is 19v19. This is a step up. Tank's getting crossed. Guillotine on the backside hits both members of minion miners, but the Phoenix damage is just too much. Ball Lightning does not deter Weskra and that Lucio. Whoa. That Phoenix damage, the bomb damage. Kobo on that. Arthas has been scaling all game long. It is just Azul'jin with 40 seconds to go. Minion Miners. Step up, they eat a huge chunk of damage. Peak at her 20s. Uh, that is Boston Open. Hold on, Brock. Guillotine does not connect. 60% on core. Kobo will step up and finish Zul'jin off. And the Minion Miners will pick up a victory. What a very well played game, number one. Well played. Great play by Weskra on that Lucio. Uh, whoa, Mariners on the Blaze was making huge connections with the Jet Propulsion. However, the Lucio disengage was too much for a Zul'jin and a Cassia to close the gap. And then ETC and Blaze are, are caught a little bit doing their own things. You saw a lot of pa you know Power Slide and then Jet Propulsion with Root, but it was never quite all three of them on at the same time and that really looked like what it was going to be key Kobo uh, on the Arthas just wading into the back line a great job and I think in the on the first time that the objective was top I believe it was the second Triglov protector Arthas died but he had so much frozen tempest on two members I believe uh, I, I think Zul'jin and Blaze went down, trading out for an Arthas. And at that point, Minion Miners just started winning team fights. And uh, so, when you have Johanna Lucio and a lead, it's it's like you're running downhill. And it's a bit of a sports ball reference, but that kinda is true. Um, in that you feel like every engagement is the one that you want. You can really size your enemy up. It was hard in that game for House of Shez to get a lot of value out of stage dive. They did a great job using it uh, on the first objective. But just because of the timings of camps and the rotations and the, the dominance by minion miners in the mid game, they were unable to do so. All right. Very well played game. Now we're headed to Tomb.
get our lobby set up. Game number two. The Minion Manors. Heading up against the House of Shez. Two teams right smack dab in the uh, middle of the playoff seedings for Division C East. Okay, let's get that lobby link. There we are. Very well taken. Hmm. The ah, I'm trying to think of what. Just one, you know, one or two things you do see in in draft. Why the Malfurion? When everything else is available, I think Malfus played well. Oops. But you really have again when you want to do something that might be not quite. Uh, S tier, if you will. You've got to justify it with the hero itself getting a lot of value. And that was a little bit of an issue. It was hard for House of Shez to disengage and then get back into a fight. They usually lost one of their DPS members, and that was really enough to cost them. Okay, teams are in lobby. I got a couple things set up on the back end here. Thank everybody for joining us tonight. Just wanted to bring a CDV game. Hey, Boo has been active in the chat. I certainly owe it to him to give a shout out to the minion miners who are doing good things in game one. Flash is ready. All right. Teams are ready. Let's get going. Tomb of the Spider Queen. The spider queen. Can I get a Kerrigan? It seems unlikely that Brightwing. Kind of weird on Tomb. Eh, it's a Kerrigan, Matt. Diablo banned out. House of Shez banned Big Red with their first ban in game number one, and they will follow suit in game number two and Kobo with some tears. Deckard Kane, all right, so you don't want the antagonist of the series. Well, we don't want you to have the protagonist. Phoenix, okay, the exact same things. This would be a Jaina, then. Oh. Genie overlays helps. Hope I've done a good job narrating it, fam. Johanna Ban. In the first game, that was a Jaina Ban on Volskaya. I like that Johanna Ban. Johanna's too much of a, a safety crutch on Tomb. All she does is wave clear and stall. She does both of those very well. Captain Wedge cheering for House of House. Rainer first pick by the Shezsters. Oh, vanquish the weak. Yeah, Wesker wants that Lucio again, and Minion Miners will pick up the Jaina. Touch of ice tonight. And we get the response from House of Shez. They will go with the ETC, which they had in game number one. It was played by Death Arcaris. Death Arcaris? I don't know exactly how to say it. I'm not going to lie. And they will go with Kael'thas. So KT on one side. Yena on the other. There's a Taronda ban. Minion Miners, you gonna make me happy? Just saying. Carry again. Ten 
10 seconds left for a suggest to make their second ban. They will get rid of a Varian. Now they have their opportunity here. Could be a different tank. In that Minion Miner's already banned out the Johanna. They obviously like the Arthas. Although Arthas Kael'thas is not fun. There's the Muradin. And there's a Genjiro. Jenna Genji, a deadly combo. And they will be manned at the front by a Muradin. I will fight to my last breath. Frostborn hungers. Arthas on both sides of the draft tonight. And this time, House of Shez will pick up the Lich King for their bottom lane. And they will also grab Rhaegar. Minion Miners with the last pick here. They need an off laner. Blaze your roll available. They will go with Leo. The old tomb special. It is a Leoric. <laughs> Shout out to Captain Wedge in chat. Good to see you, brother. Thank you for hanging out tonight. Okay. So Wesker's Lucio was good enough that it just kind of breaks that little crux of the meta. There's a really good single target blow up. Genji, Murd, and Jaina. As long as your mac and cheese can step up. Game number two. Those are not the right match, by the way. What are you gonna do? Might have the wrong tool up. All right, looking to earn a split for the House of Shes. Flash gonna be playing that Rainer. The Thorgerus is gonna be playing ETC. Peach on the Kelthos. Mariners is on the Arthas and Caribou on the Pupper is gonna be playing that Rhaegar. Romanian Miners looking to get the domination tonight. Kobo on the Leoric. Coffin on the Muradin. Mac of Cheese will be playing the Yena, MBB on Genji, and Wesker once again on the Lucio. Leo heading bottom already. Murden, think of the man's man salad. Perfect storm, baby. Who needs third wind when the other guys are dead? Jin and Kael'thas will trade out their big AOE spells, looking to get the wave clear going. Five members of House of Jazz are here, and now Arthas will split. Wave clear is a little bit better for House of Jazz, especially given they have, they have the Rhaegar. Kara will be playing the Puppers. You can see they're already winning that race rather handily. A little bit of poke on the ETC there. The bottom lane. Usually, Leo wins this rather handily early on. It's hard for Arthas to keep up with that spooky head damage. And uh, typically, Arthas struggles in the mana department more so than Leo. Although, Arthas did get a two second CDR on his trait for us on Hunger. He does are nice enough to give a little bit back there. Hustle still leading in the four man rotation here. Superior poke damage. Superior wave play with Rhaegar. What else we got going on here, actually? I haven't really checked out. Is that Mana Addict. Oh, Wesker's in a little bit of trouble. Ooh, the Gravity Labs misses. Cawthon should be alright. And the Himbibo uses Cyber Agility to pop over the wall. First scrap of the game goes over to House of Chez. They'll turn some gems in. 
Kobo putting a lot of pressure on Arthas. Once this gets up to the wall, I would expect to see Leo starting to make those rotations up towards mid. Start maybe threatening a turn in. Maybe helping rotations and allow minion miners to pick up a camp. We shall yet see. Level 4 picked up for both teams. We'll flash our talents to the bottom of the screen. Everybody's actually doing pretty good for stacking. Five hits on Perfect Storm. 2k damage on Jaina. Sometimes if you fall behind, Calton has to be in trouble. But as Calton has to abandon this. Himmibo does as well. Calton has a bomb on him. Is alright. Meanwhile, in the bottom lane, Kobo doing things. All those gems are lost, by the way. That now means that House of Chess has 26 gems with Arthas losing what had to be at least 15. Let's get back to it. Sometimes with Jaina, if you're behind in a four-man rotate... You just have no opportunities to uh, actually apply PvP damage. And you'll be behind on Advanced Ice Block. Mr. Mac and Cheese steps up, gets a good little rip of a combo onto Kael'thas. Minion Miners have enough for a turn in. Arthas is respawning and heading towards the bot lane now. Flash steps up on Rainer. Has to use the heal. What are they Rainer going for? Fight or flight. No, by 30 seconds. So he's probably got about 20 seconds on that cooldown left. Leo continues to do work down here. Kobo needs to rotate either up or this needs to happen. This is a free turn in. There's 19 gems. Cawthon will finish this off. House of Shez is late. Muradin will finish off the first objective. Alright, four minion miners. They do not have great siege damage. Kill pressure, yes. And they do have an advantage with the orc winning in the bottom lane. This wave will be pushed up decently well. 4v4 in the top. Cawthon is up front. Blizzard's already been used. Muradin has to back off. He's down to about 40% health. Just shy of the threshold for second win. But Gara steps up on the ETC. Anti Siege is very good with KT and Rainer. We'll see how mid does. Working on a wall. In the bot lane, Leo presses the advantage. He should be able to get all of bottom wall. This could be a three wall play. Bombs are out. Blizzard will finish off top. Mid needs about 10 more seconds, though, not even that. Minions MVP. And in the bottom, Leo just winning against Arthas here. Here's the blue. Does Kobo have a spooky hand? He does. Marinus has a long way to go to get out of here. It's a lot of damage. And Kobo will just get some passive push here with the assistance of minions. Meanwhile, in mid, a 4v4. A little bit more stacking for minion miners. They are out to a big advantage. Kobo finishes bot off. Now minion miners need to play a little bit of goaltending. Need to see if they can win the race to 10. Kobo doing work. We work paying dividends in the bot lane. He actually just forced Arthas all the way out. Stormbolt connects on Kel'Thuz. There is a running away flame strike. Peach is okay. Leoric patrolling bottom. And this is what that advantage does. Now Leoric is a one-man goaltending machine. Really is no threat from the Arthas. One spooky hand forces him to half health. And he has to retreat out. Minion miners are ahead in the race to 10, but they need to make sure that they're capturing XP in the other lanes, particularly in top. Flame strike comes out. Mostly misses. Bit of pressure there from Himbibo on that Genji. You got an Arthas in the jungle. Kobo says hi. And look at Garrus. This is a turn in by himself. Jaina takes a ton of poke. Clothin needs to not die for this. I think they're going to have to let this go. Uso and Genji were late. Leo has to get over the wall. And he does. Boys, the flame strike snipe. 
called the Pokemon on the back. All right, so level 10 is the consolation prize, however, for the members of Minion Miners. Extract Avatar, Ring. Both of those missing. And there it is. Oh, Westgrid needs to hit Sound Barrier and does. Okay, we had Entomb to lock Rainer in to get the kill that wasn't. And as a Kael'thas combo nearly one-shots Lucio, Sound Barrier comes out to prevent all of that damage over time, which would have killed Lucio. And now Minion Myers can clean up. All they had to do was get rid of one Jimmy. Smack and Cheese is in the mid lane. Gina looks like she will be safe to clear there. Also, oh, Chez may look to claim top, though. They do have level 10 of their own. Hyperion. Oh, Phoenix. Ancestral. Mosh Pit. And oh, yeah. Cindy's here. That'd be a Cindragosa. Keep an eye on Mariners. He's stepping back up. Rip it. There it is. Cindragosa is here. Deathlord Karras is going to play out the Mosh. Catches two members in. Jaina goes down. The Phoenix combo is there. Colton uses oh, Avatar, but um, just immediately gets shotgunned out of his leap. Cindragosa, you dirty, dirty girl. We had a Hyperion in there as well. What a great Wombo by House of Shez. They use it to claim top. They've got 45 gems. They don't quite have a turn in. We'll look to pick it up. <laughs> what a wild Wombo. Cindragosa and then Moshpit's easy. Minion Miners actually do pick up a turn in. They are now, by the way, down about a quarter of a level. House of Jez moving about with a newfound confidence. A lot of quick mounts, a lot of quick wave clear. They set up bottom lane to at least be even in their favor. And they're thinking about defending mid. Uh, I mean, the monster was easy because once Cindergosa came out and the slow was there, everybody's trying to go back to the same gate. <laughs> Like Garrus just steps up and says, nope. We'll just take that monster right here. All right, Phoenix comes out. The Web Weaver needs maybe one more auto attack to finish off mid. And there it goes. Bottom can push itself rather effectively. 12s here for both teams. Also just needs to be careful because with... Top fort and a little bit more. This could be something. Oh, Peach actually has to use Mana Addict and gets out of it. Shindra goes there, hits three members in the jungle. Sound barrier to try to get everybody out of there. The flame strike was missed. This was Ring of Frost. I was about to say, I thought 13 could have been achieved by minion miners. And it will be with a little bit. Maybe one tower here. But they used all their combos in the jungle to try to find a kill on Kelta. Mana Addict came through. Peach lives. How much of Shez will survive another objective phase? The hour of the Jimmy cleaning up bot. Closes. 45 in the bank for House of Shez. 34 on hand. Now the goal 10. Genji, t excuse me, Genji top. Kobo on that Leo bottom. Usher Shez was checking out boss. Now that they see that their opponents have grabbed their bruiser camp, the members of House of Shez will pick up their respective mercenaries. Westgrade gets Sir Mac right onto the Giants in bottom. And the Macro Vayners. For now, we'll go over to me. They only have 24 gems. It's going to take them quite a while. To accrue enough for another turn in. In fact, their next play is to try to get some kills and then a boss. ETC steps up. The Entomb is there. Extract immediately. There's also a cleanse and an ancestral healing. But everything timed out so early that Kael'thas winds up going down. Mushpit hits three members on the back. Murden coming on out of this one. Genji goes down. Kiribu finishes out the kill. 
Mariner's trying to get away. He's got a spooky hand on him. Kobo is just going to run it down. Arthas dead. Rhaegar has enough puppy speed to get away. 2-1. And the miners keep on trucking. Leo and Murden cleaning up in mid. Jaina will escort Giants, who will pick up a tower in the bottom lane. Now the members of House of Shes are down here. Like I said, the min Minion Miners needed a couple things to happen before they can make a play on boss. I don't think the window is there. They don't have a boss rip comp. Uh, don't tell Sir Mac and Cheese, because that's a blizzard. And here's the trade. It will be boss for bottom turning. Remember, no stage dive. So even though House of Shells knows what's going on, I don't think they can rotate up that quickly. However, that's a lot of low health bars. Lucio should be enough. Great play by Minion Miners. Wasn't sure they could get away with it there. They will use Boss to cancel out this turn in. This should be enough for them to save both mid and bottom four. Remember, mid has two towers. Bottom has about a half a tower, if you will. Boss is actually pushing into the keep. Should finish off the rest of this tower in top lane with that smash. The five mana minion miners will pick up the objective here in the bottom lane. And again, they just stay ahead. Now, House of Shez has done a very good job keeping this game pretty close. They have enough couched XP here in the uh, mid lane with this configuration of buildings where if they do uh, find a way to get a couple of kills and maybe they find a way to do it with this death bush here, they can very easily snowball this. They have 60 gems, as do the minion miners. Both teams have the opportunity for a turn in. However, 16 advantage on the side of the M&M boys. Raiders the target, Hyperion, to cancel that out. The X-Ray comes through. He is the target. Genji is in big trouble. The Ancestral Healing just saving Raynor. Ring comes through. Murdered at the front. Kobo's trying to see if he can get a counter kill on anybody. Lyric has to run away from the kill toss damage. Avatar will save Murden, but it will not find another kill. Boy, Cleanse. Ancestral. Both used on Raynor. They save him from inside the Entomb. Minion Miner's got the setup that they wanted. House of Shares makes the play. Think about top here. There's no towers. And House of Shares position aggressively enough uh, so that the Webweaver will spawn very close to keep. Arthas does not have Cindy. That's 40 seconds away. They don't have much in the way. Uh, of cooldowns, but neither do Minion Miners. Phoenix and Entomb are the only options available. Rainer and Kelthus will still do work. Mariners needs to just make sure that he does not take too much damage, particularly from Kobo and the Spooky Hand. The Phoenix is there to try to zone away. Will Weaver steps up. It is at half health, and it will begin its siege on the keep. Kobo missed the W. And there's the sound barrier ring on top of it. There is no ancestral healing. Kael'thas is deleted. Genji securing that kill. ETC is next. Mariner's being chased down. He's got Frozen Tempest to try to disengage. Wesker trying to implore his teammates to get forward there. One more boop ought to do it. Sindragosa was used, but that isn't going to do too much. Minion Miners pick up three kills. Have to hurry to pick this up. I don't think they can lose keeps here. They'll lose walls, but they pick up about 30 seconds of free clear. And they'll be in a much better position to make the move to 20. Just taking a quick look at their talents before we do get there. Jaina finishes with the advanced ice block. A couple more stacks for uh, Murden. Almost a 50 globe shield. We'll kill them. Right on. Cawthon will turn in here. 
mid. He's got 33. That doesn't quite finish off. He's at 58. This is exactly where Minion Miners want to be. They can just paint the map a little blue. Choose when to get the turn in. Kobo will back off. And Weskra will finish this. And with that, rotate the overcommit to Leo in the top lane. Minion Miners will go ahead, clean things up in mid. They'll have a Web Weaver with a full Mercenary King. They need keeps, though. Their keeps are exposed. Their keeps have taken damage. House of Shes has been very efficient during their Web Weaver phases. But now we get to run it down. Remember, Phoenix and Hyperion. So all of this will go away very quickly. The House of Shes give the order. Double Flame Strike almost finishes off the Mage Minion. Mercy in camp. But Weaver's doing fairly well. Keep an eye on top. And bottom. Both at about three quarter health. Minion Miners really want maybe two cooldowns. There's Phoenix. They get one. That is it. Cindergosa, Hyperion still available, as is Ancestral Healing, which has been huge. This half health. Web Weaver will move up to the keep, which will start to take damage. Is under threat. There should be another cooldown. Keep an eye on Flash here. Oh, they lose the keep. Akiris goes in. It looks like he went for the boss. They gave it up. Now it's just a zone. Ring of Frost comes through. It's getting in on a few members, but on the backside, Leo is in trouble. Kobo trying to use the healing to stay alive. And Leo is all right. Genji finishes off the kill on ETC. Rainer could be next. Flash is under pressure. Can get back to Hearth. Level 20 was picked up. Bottom keep goes down at the same time. Minion Miners with a quick blitz. That keep went down to minions and scaling. House of Shez did not want to use any of their uh, their available cooldowns. Such as Cindergosa or Hyperion. And then the level 20 in Tomb comes out. Oh, buried alive. Minion Miners wind up with two keeps in their two vulnerable lanes. There's Cindergosa again. Kobo is low. There's a Phoenix, and Jaina has to ice block it. Buried Alive used yet again. Marinus is silenced. Arthas is going down. He'll trade out for likely Lior. Genji trying to find some resets in there. Is alive. Rhaegar goes, as does Jaina. ETC is just respawning. Himmy actually gets Mana Attic proc. Cawthon now just needs to find him. There it is. There's one Stormbolt. Kael'thas goes down. Flash is next. Bossa Nova comes through. We have a boss on core. This is about... I figure they started it at the 19 minutes. So you got about a 19 minute scaling boss. Coffin steps up on the Murden. Let's go there with Lucio. It's just he and Hemibo. There is the Hyperion. Avatar is popped. This is at 90. Flash is going down. Eats an X strike. Kobo will be back shortly. 40, 30... And game. And the Minion Miners claim the set. It's a mid to late game scaling. Very well played. With one late team fight. And a lot of Entomb. Shout out to Kobo. I thought he was great in both games, by the way. I think the Leoric, uh, the Entombs, and then the Buried Alive's at the end of the game. In which, yeah, I mean, listen, Buried Alive is just an insane talent in coordinated play. I thought Caribou did a great job on the Rhaegar. They saved a lot of targets that were in the Entomb. Flash is good on the Rain. You can see he leads the game of damage by just a metric ton. Those are close ones. House of Shez had objectives in both games. It was pretty even. Right about up to 13, and then in both games, Minion Miners just started to kind of take over. All right. We'll pop in. See if we can get somebody for a lobby interview. Good set. The Minion Miners now trying to set themselves up for the playoffs. 
House of Shadows will take the loss, slide down the rankings a little bit, but they're still a good team. They've been around in NGS before they know what they're doing. I don't know who we're going to get quite yet. We get the captain, Wesker. Will they be both stop by? Who knows? All right, chat. Let's go pop around. Oh. Pipe train pulling. Shout out to you, Hembo. Cheers. Thank you for the bits. It's my pleasure to catch you guys. Well played, set. Looks like we're going to get a crowd. You know, I said at the beginning of the season I was going to let this happen, but everybody's just so damn cool. All right. Which means... I'll be joined by... The hey, man. what's up? Good evening. Congratulations. Well played. Oh, Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. That was, that was the worst Genji game of all time. I feel frankly embarrassed. <laughs> Rip. All right. So, yeah. gents, introduce yourselves. Who do I have here tonight? Eskra. So I played. Yeah. I actually played Lucio both games. You did quite effectively at that, sir. Tip of the hat. Well, thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, and I'm Himibo. What's happening, brother? Yeah. What's up, man? All right, guys. Uh, going into this set. Where did you guys feel you were going to match up with House of Shez? You guys have, I believe, identical records. Uh, getting close to playoff times. How did you feel you were going to do before? And uh, did you execute your game plan here to get the domination? Yeah, we did. I, I think uh, I think we were, we were really hoping to just do one and one and possibly pull off a 2-0. But uh, this this playoff race is really tight. So we... we <laughs> That one and one was kind of a must for us, so we're really happy with, uh, yeah, really happy with the way it went. It's a fun, yeah, we, it's a fun division you guys have here, by the way. It is it's competitive. Very close. Yeah, Excel is really close with us, and uh, House of Chez or Shea, or however you say that. So we were like, like uh, Wes said, really hoping for at least a one one, hmm. just because the way things play out with us in Excel, we think that there's a good chance they don't two zero, which would put us in front of them. All right. So. Uh, yeah, really happy. Right on. A lot of moving parts, a lot of things going on. Um, all right. Uh, I do not recognize you guys, so I'm assuming this is your first season in NGS. Where do you guys come? Yes. Where do you guys come from? Uh, where we live. Um, most <laughs> well, of us I mean, live know, in. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah. What's, we... what's the scoop? How did you guys get here? I don't know. So a few of us were playing cheer league together um, two seasons before this, and we we kind of had some different roster movements and eventually ended up here and we, we kind of got in a higher division than we were hoping to. So we weren't quite sure how that would go, but we've been, we've been pretty happy with the way it's worked out. So yeah. what Wes means to say is we were hoping for storm and uh, <laughs> we settled with C. Uh, That's not at all. <laughs> we were hoping for the last yeah. division. Well, I think you guys are having a pretty good season. Um, all right, so yeah. individual questions. It seems like in both games, it took you guys a little bit to sort of distinguish yourself. Uh, were you always playing for those sort of late game 13, 16 comps? You know, what was the, what was the plan there? It looks like you traded objectives in the beginning of the game. Uh, go ahead, Emby. Oh, okay. So, well, personally, we didn't even get our our pick guy in here. <laughs> uh, Cawthon is sort of our pick guy, but we. Um, I think we more or less prioritize taking away picks from uh, the other team. So we utilize stats of the storm and see all the picks that they get, how good, uh, how well they perform on their different heroes. And so that's like sort of our uh, heaviest priority, I would say. I mean, obviously, we want to get something that uh, will work for us. Yep. Um, but I don't know that we're necessarily uh, playing on late game or anything like that. It's just. Uh, grinding out small advantages wherever we can and uh, making smart decisions. All right. So, do you guys have any other matches for the rest of the week? Or are you done with round four? That's it for You're us. You're done. Oh, boy. So Watchers now, oh, and now have. Very yeah. cool. Mm -hmm. So now you get to sit back. All right. Uh, do you know 
what sort of range you guys could be in for the playoff seating? We're hoping for third. Okay. I, I think that as, as long as Excel doesn't 2 0. So Excel's currently in uh, set, uh, third place. Okay. And that will put us in fourth. But um, if they won one, just the way the percentages work out, because they played one more series than us, uh, we'll actually leapfrog them. Uh, and they're playing a square and four triangles, I believe, Ooh. which is the top team yes. in the league that's uh, really strong. So that's, that's a that's a hot little matchup. Okay, all right, guys. Well, the floor is yours. Your time for shoutouts. Minion Miners with the two zero over a House of Shades tonight. Yeah, I just want to say uh, good game to the other team. They played really well. Um, I think we had a few fights where we were able to line up some ults, and that was pretty much the difference. I feel like, but um, yeah, thanks for the cast and uh, just having a blast playing. Really, cheers. Yeah, thanks, uh, Bobo. You're awesome. Right on. Uh, I hope that uh, I got I brought you some viewers. I tried to anyway. Hey, it's all um, good, man. I, like I said, I, yeah. was very, I was very happy to catch this game. We'll see if we can catch you guys in the playoffs. That was that was a good match. Oh, I we're we're pretty stoked. This is like I started playing. I told a uh, uh, earlier caster that it's my. Uh, I just started playing in July. Um, I swapped over from league, you might say. Yep. And. Uh, it's uh it's been super fun like this league has been awesome and i also want to give a shout out to kobo who hopped into the lobby and he hasn't said anything i've just been letting you all do your discussion my bad no it's I, yeah, i'm that's, so happy that's, you're that's here silent silent but deadly listen uh <laughs> I, I, i'm just no i'm gonna give kobo the shout out for mvp and tonight with that arthas leo combo uh brother looking good looking good Thank those you, in tombs were disgusting the Arthas is a little rusty for me, but I yeah, play Leo quite a bit just it, because of the double tank comps. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, the, the Arthas, you had to trade uh, hard, but like you, they were effective trades. And uh, and I, I saw that and I appreciated that. Well played from the off later. Kobo, shoutouts for you, man. Sliding in here at the end. Uh, I want to thank my mom for bringing me <laughs> into this world. Mom, that was a good move. <laughs> Worked out. No, um, I mean, <laughs> hooray. I... <laughs> I like playing video games. That's good. <laughs> uh, you're you should, a hero. You can shout that out anytime. No. Uh, He's never doing an interview again. <laughs> good to know. All right. <laughs> Minion Miners, everybody. <laughs> Woo. Catch him uh, in thanks, Bobo. Guys, hey, good luck, in the, good luck in the playoffs, man. Good things. Seriously. Thanks, Bobo. Have a good one. Appreciate Cheers. It. Thanks, man. Have a good one. Okay. <laughs> All right, gang. Uh, I'm going to find a match for us. It looks like Akuma's got a hot cast. So uh, we'll go over there. We'll send a modest amount of viewers tonight over there. We'll go raid the Akuma. I've been your host, Professor Bobo. Congratulations to the Minion Miners. And good luck to House of Shez for the rest of the season. I just have to... Apparently, i got to go, uh, go sit in a scrim. All right, gang. Good luck. Have yourselves a fun night.